Hello everyone. Welcome to something I've wanted to do for a long, long time, but I've never had the balls to do it. I love the Call of Duty Zombie series, and I've been playing it since my childhood. However, I believe that there is something that is heavily looked over in this fantastic video game series. The music. Everybody rants on and on about what maps are the best, most fun to play, most pleasing aesthetically, what weapons are the best, yada yada yada. But no one mentions the music. So in this video, I want to give the music the spotlight this time and forget about the maps themselves. For the most part. Fair warning, before getting into all the specifics of this list, I, I just want to say that I am in no way qualified to make an objective examination of these songs. I'm a computer scientist, not a musician. I just know that songs sound good to my monkey brain, but I don't really have very much reason as to why. However, I did play the flute for a while, so I know some pretty basic music stuff. Uh, if you hear any meowing in the background, I have three very no nosy and noisy cats, so that's why. But without further ado, let me introduce what exactly I'll be ranking. Call of Duty Zombies has many songs throughout the years placed within their maps. I will be ranking specifically the songs that play within the maps themselves and are triggered in some way. This is what I'm defining as an easter egg song. This can be through interacting with an object, three teddy bears, shooting something, or any other method. But they have to be in the map and they have to be triggered in some way. I will also not be ranking all of the perk jingles as I believe that they belong on their own tier list, which, you know, hopefully I will make in the near future if that's something of interest. And also because I believe that they are their own entity, they're not really activated other than the buying aspect of it. And finally, I may make a follow-up to this video depending on how well this video does and just how many songs that I inevitably forget to include. I tried to make this listing as comprehensive as possible, and I'm sure that there are some easter egg songs that you didn't even know existed. So, I'm hoping I didn't miss any, but I, I'm not so, I don't have so much hubris to think that I got them all. But, the songs are going to be placed in one of seven tiers. Now, why is there seven? Uh, this is because there's one tier for every note in the musical scale, A through G. Unless you're Bach, in which case there's eight for the letter H, but comment if any music nerds actually get that reference. But anyways, the tiers are as follows. The Jet Gun tier. F tier, obviously. It's F tier because I'm not going to wait two minutes to kill five zombies or use a glitch that almost kills me so that I can kill one zombie at a time. It sucks. I hate the Jet Gun. Anyways, moving on. Winter's Howl tier. E tier. Sure, these songs are playable, just as the same way as the Winter Howl is technically usable, but I'm never going to choose these ones in a lineup. The Death of Orion tier, D tier. It's not good, but it's not the worst thing I've ever heard. Like, like if someone plays this song or gives me the Death of Orion, I'm not going to be upset. Scavenger tier, C tier. It's middle of the road, as average as average can be. There is great potential, but it kind of flops. Paralyzer tier, B tier. The songs here are an absolute banger. They are not the best of the best, but they are as they, but they are good. And if someone plays it, you will surely enjoy them. The Wonder Wasp tier, A tier, a bold claim, but these songs are notorious, catchy, and more. You probably activate these songs every time you play the map because you can't get them out of your head. And even if you don't, you can't deny that they are a certified bop and just a very good Easter egg song. And finally, we get the Pièce de Résistance. The Thunder Gun tier, S tier. These songs are the tip of the top of Mount Everest. They are as elusive and hard to come by as quality day one zombie guides. I'm kidding by the way, I love all of zombie YouTuber content, but man. The Shangri-La Easter Egg tutorial still isn't right to this day. <laughs> but w when you think of the zombie maps uh, that these Easter Egg songs are on, you probably have them already playing in your head. Activating them is an absolute must, and they are amazing songs even without them in the context of the map that they are in. And finally, before we get started, I just want to say that I mean no harm to any YouTubers whose names are used in this video. I love all of your guys' content so, so much, and all of you have inspired me to make this list and to be on YouTube in general. And finally, I hope you all enjoy. Please let me know if you do enjoy in the comments. I'll try and respond to any and everybody that I can. 
Subscribe if you enjoyed as well. I'm hoping to get more of these tier lists and possibly even an in-depth analysis of some other zombies content, or even just any content you want to see in the future. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Now, I know I said that we were going to go ahead, but I have to give some prerequisite information. Each song will be chosen randomly and ranked from there. This is to give it as objective process as possible rather than choosing some of my favorite songs and then going to some of my least favorite or vice versa. And since no one ever gives criteria for how they rank things, I wanted to. So each song will be rated based off of three criteria, and each song will be given a number for each of these criterion. The amounts will then be totaled up, and they will be placed into their respective categories. This is the most objective process I can think of for a totally subjective tier list. And before unveiling the categories, I want to emphasize that I am ranking them as Easter egg songs. Not as just songs, but Easter egg songs. This means how good the song will obviously be a huge emphasis, but it's not the entire score. Here's what I mean. 10 and below are F tier, 14 and below are E tier, 18 and below are D tier, 21 and below are C tier, 24 and below are B tier, 27 and below are A tier, and above 27 are the S tiers. Now, finally, the three criteria that get to our total score is, first, catchiness. Catchiness is how good the song is in general. This is the most important category of them all, so the rating will be out of 20 points. Emphasis on the song will be placed if the song is original or not. If it is created for zombies, it may get extra points in this or a different category, as I believe that it is deserving of more points than any sort of pre-existing song that was just thrown into the game mode. Second category is fittingness. How well does it fit into the map that it is in? Sometimes the song does not fit at all with the map, and it can completely ruin the vibe of the song because of it. This will be out of 6 points. And finally, lore significance, the smallest category. What is the underlying message of the song? This isn't the most important criteria, but it does lift some songs up when you can listen to the motifs and lyrics found within the song and think about their deeper meanings. This will only be out of 4 points. Finally, I know I sent 3, but this is my tier list, not yours. A song may get an extra credit point or two if the activation of the song is incredibly unique or if there is some other unique quality about it that I enjoy, and I will say what that unique quality is whenever it comes up. Most activations are through activating three teddy bears, bottles, or some other object, but if the song is activated in some other way, then I believe that bonus points are due, hence why this category exists. Also, in order to rank these as objectively as possible, I closed my eyes and sat and listened to each of these songs before ranking them so I can give a very serious and an as recent as possible analysis and opinion of them. Okay, I know that this is a long, like, 8 minute intro, and I've been holding you captive here for way too long, but here's one last thing before we get into the list that I have to say. I will not be ranking the following songs. Transits I'ma Try It Out by Skrillex, Carry On by Avenged Sevenfold because they are removed shortly after the release, Requiem by Anton Reika from Darius Nidaha because it is such a short and hard to rank piece, since it is an old classical piece, Reflections from Togdor Toten because it is really just the Golden Pack Punch theme extended and I don't have much to say about it, Revelations, the song, not the map, from Gorard Crowverty because it is a short 30 second piece and I don't really think it can be played in the game to my knowledge, and Damned because, well, it isn't an easter egg song. <laughs> okay. If you really want a ranking, I'ma try it out gets F tier, Carry On gets high A tier, Requiem gets C tier, Reflections gets D tier, Revelations gets C tier, and Damned will not be ranked since it is literally everywhere. Okay. Finally, after all that is cleared, and after holding you hostage for nearly 10 minutes, here's the first song. Not Ready to Die by Avenged Sevenfold. What a song to start with, I just have to say. Like I said, this, the entire order of these songs is completely random, so crazy that we got this song first. Catchiness is a 20 out of 20. The Fittingness, 5 out of 6. The War Significance, 4 out of 4. And Bonus Points, 1. Overall... Starting the list with a grand total of 30 out of 30 S tier. Before getting back to Not Ready to Die, I want to address something pretty obvious. 
Uh, the song you're listening to is not Not Ready to Die. It is actually Alistair's theme from Black Ops 4. Now, why am I doing this? Uh, if it wasn't obvious, it's because of copyright reasons. Uh, most of the songs you're going to listen to are going to be the songs that I'm rating. It's just certain ones that are owned by Treyarch Sound or Kevin Sherwood, like the song Not Ready to Die, since it's owned by Avenged Sevenfold. They will need to be replaced with a different zombie song that I just chose at random. Uh, this first one, like I said, is Alistair's theme. But going forward, if you're confused when the song that you are listening to is not the one I'm rating, that is most likely why. Now, firstly, the song is activated by activating three meteoroids found within the map Call of the Dead. Nothing very unique. But once you get that last one, you hear a very chilling, cold breeze come sweeping in before an organ-like piano sweeps you off your feet. And then the guitar comes in and the drums... And then M Shadows kicks it off from there. I, it was surprising hearing it the first time. This was the first time that Avenged Sevenfold played for a zombie map, and it was it came so out of nowhere in a map that already was filled with celebrities. But beyond that, I mean, needless to say, the song is catchy as hell. Not only can the song stand on its own and proven that it can, some of my friends know this song by Avenged Sevenfold, but don't know anything about the map it was made for, just because they like Avenged Sevenfold. It's crazy catchy, I can listen to it over and over, and it's even on my personal playlist. Great song. But beyond catchiness, it also has extremely high lore significance as well, because it describes all of the emotions and thoughts going through Ultimus Richtofen's head at this point in time. See, Call of the Dead takes place in one of the Group 935's testing facilities, specifically the one that Richtofen is stationed at, and so a lot of the lyrics center around Richtofen and Richtofen's grand scheme, his thoughts, experimentation, stuff like that. And so it has great lore significance. It describes what he believes is going to happen and so much more. It even has a callback in the middle of the song to Damned, which catches you off guard, but in a good way. It, it further calls back to the entire zombie universe and gives me chills every single time hearing Damned right in the middle, and pun intended. But finally, the fittingness score is the only thing stopping it from receiving a perfect score, I have to say. Yes, the cold breeze at the beginning, the mysterious creepiness behind it, and the kick-ass beat really fit the vibe of an ice-cold tundra full of the undead, but the only thing that keeps me hesitant from giving it a perfect 6 out of 6 here is that we aren't Richtofen. Like, th this is Call of the Dead we are playing. Like, yes, some of the ba like the background story of the map is Richtofen, but we're not playing as him, nor do we really care about him at the time. We are playing not as our original four of Ultimus, but as a guest celebrity cast. Yes, that means that Avenged Sevenfold, like I said, perfectly fits since they are a guest celebrity band, but the song itself is about a character that only appears as a voice line machine behind a steel door for the easter egg. The song isn't about the tundra, what will happen next after Call of the Dead, what is happening currently, or in the past of or much into the past of the facility, if anything else. It just gives the backstory for a character who we aren't playing as. Honestly, I conceive this song just as easily being in Shangri-La, or even Ascension, if you remove the sound effects related to Winter. But if you kept the B and the lyrics, I could easily see this song in any of the other two maps, especially Shangri-La, since Shangri-La specifically relates to Richtofen's past, his experimentation, and so much more. I could even see it being on the moon, to be honest, and there's already an Avenged Sevenfold song on moon, so it would fit right in. But it would be great foreshadowing, just as it is in Call of the Dead currently, so I don't think it's in a bad place, hence why it gets a 5 out of 6. <laughs> but finally, it saves itself from not getting that perfect score through the secret lore of Call of the Dead. The Siberian facility is actually where Richtofen did a lot of his testing, as I said, so it's very fitting for this song in for the song to be in the map since he formulated his grand scheme in this map. So, with that all said, this song deserves a 5 out of 6 and the lore significant score. I mean, in the fittingness score, sorry. That said, however, I save it, give it the perfect 30 out of 30. Why did I do that? But that's because of a single X factor that needs to be considered that I very briefly touched upon. This is an already established, very incredible, critically acclaimed metal band that sang a completely original 7 minute song about lore in a side mode in a video game. 
That is fucking incredible. And deserves to be acknowledged that Treyarch was able to pull this off. I mean, I know Avengers Sevenfold is already allowing their songs for Black Ops 2 as a whole, but to get them to perform a completely original song for the game is something incredible. And why it sits comfortably at the top of S tier. Abracadaver. Abracadaver from Ascension gets a catchiness score of 16 out of 20, fittingness of 6 out of 6, lore significance of 4 out of 4, and an overall score of 26 out of 30. A tier. Just shy of S tier, I believe that Abracadaver is an amazing song that I could listen to often. Just not on repeat. I absolutely love the little background noises and sound effects that make it so creative and effective. Plus, Elena's voice in these sections with all the riddles and the whispering behind her gives me chills every single time. It's super catchy, fun to listen to, and extremely unique. There's not another Easter egg song that really captures a feel that Abracadaver does. Personally, I believe that these parts could stand on their own in a metal song. However, I believe that the chorus is what brings the song down. It's kind of repetitive. I don't feel like I am real and other similar lines that feel slow and it's kind of dragging the song down a little and taking away from the more creepier verses and rhymes. That said, the bridge of the song, the we're the same portion near the end, brings me right back up and again leaving me with a happy and yet haunting feeling once the song ends. And don't even get me started on the piano lines, they are hauntingly beautiful. They always kill it with their, with their piano. But that's how I would describe the song, hauntingly beautiful. I love the song, it's great, but Sadly, just not all of it. Towards the middle, I get a little bored, but get launched back up into excitement by the end. It's just that middle piece that I wish was a little bit better. But beyond the catchiness itself, the fittingness and lore significance are top notch. The little piano notes and melodies really remind me of stars in space for some reason. The little jingling feel mixed with the, the creepy and dark voices and lyrics reminds me perfectly of an abandoned cosmodrome for the emptying the haunting emptiness of deep space. I was actually originally going to give the lore a 2 out of 4 because of how ambiguous the lore was for the whole song, but then in the bridge, Elena says, I'm wretched, but I'm powerful. Which puts in perspective that this whole song is through Samantha's eyes. It's what she's truly feeling, thinking, etc. And since this map is the grand reveal of Samantha as an interactive character in the story, she roars and effectively tries to kill Gersh in the Easter egg. Was it Gersh? Or is it Yuri? Whatever. I don't want, feel like thinking. I'll, I'll know it if I think about it. We'll just say Yuri. Uh, the song really fits with the map as a whole as well. Overall, really solid song, and I could easily see belonging at the bottom of S tier if tweaked a little. But for now, it'll stop, sit at the very top of A tier. <laughs> Where are we going? The original. Catchiness gets a 12 out of 20. Fittingness, 6 out of 6. Lore significance, 4 out of 4. Bonus point, 1. Overall, 23 out of 30. B tier. Now, this song gives me nostalgia. I personally believe that there are few songs that fit the map any more than the original Where Are We Going. It is haunting, mysterious, and gives a very hopeless vibe but it is a very intensely memorable song with an extremely recognizable melody. Fittingly, Mom of the Dead as a map has the exact same feeling as the song, haunting, hopeless, but extremely fun and recognizable. Furthermore, although there are very simple lyrics, it has strong lore significance when you explore the deeper meaning behind the repetition. The song, much like the map itself, is a cycle, constantly repeating the same lyrics with more haunting melodies as the song continually perpetuates this feeling of hopelessness and sense of loss. Very depressing. It really puts into your mind 
Where are we going? Our characters are going through the same thing this song. Where are we going? Should we give up? Is there any hope? Etc. The song gives a perspective on what our favorite char favorite guest characters are feeling. However, this is where a lot of the compliments end. I have to look past the nostalgia. I believe that it's catchy, but like, that's it. It's catchy. The melody very much carries the song, and as I said previously, the lyrics aren't really doing anything insane or innovative. I'll absolutely listen to the song, no question, but if I play this every single game, I would get a little annoyed. Uh, but finally, what lowers the catchiness score as well is the song is just extremely short. I mean, it's just a little over two minutes long. I think there could be so much more. However, I will give it one bonus point due to how you activate the song. You have to input 935 in that order in the Catacombs power box while in afterlife mode, and once you do that, the song starts playing. I think the process is extremely interesting, the code itself obviously gives strong lore implications that I believe deserves to be acknowledged. Now, with the other two categories, with lore significance, again, I briefly I touched upon it, but describing that cycle I think helps its lore and really helps with the fittingness score as well. This is really the only map that has a set loop inside of it unless you kept Shangri-La's Brock and Gary, but I digress. Because of that, and the bonus point, the song gets placed into the top of B tier. Above average, not amazing. I... I am alive! Yeah. Archangel. Catchiness, 17 out of 20. Fittingness, 6 out of 6. Lore significance, 4 out of 4. And overall, a 27 out of 30. A tier. Archangel is a wonderfully intense song. If you're a fan of metal, this is the song for you. It has some of the most intense and fast-paced drumline that I have ever heard. And it feels like I'm injecting black tar heroin into my veins and going absolutely fucking insane. Like, in a good way, I swear. But, like, I feel like I'm going crazy whenever <laughs> you hear the drums going off. Uh, the singers are all three of our main zombie singers. Elena, Maluka, and Nova. And personally, I believe that this is some of their best work. You have their beautiful voices and the best qualities of their singing voices. You have Elena's intense death screams, Maluka's haunting background melodies, and Nova's very intense and gravelly sounding accent notes that really add that extra oomph in many parts of the song. The song is a staple on my exercise playlist because it gets me very excited and hyped. How can you not with that crazy drum line? But furthermore, the song is as fitting as fitting can get. The map takes place on an active war zone in a World War I France. There are literally planes still fighting in the sky above the map. And needless to say, the map is hectic, just like the song illustrates. The, the drums illustrate this idea of how crazy and utterly insane the map is. They're literally giant skyscraper tall robots walking over you in a World War I battlefield. That's still going on. It's absolutely insane and the song illustrates that perfectly finally lore wise if you look at the lyrics the song is incredibly deep and similar to where are we going in the fact that it has a very deep meaning even if you don't see the lyrics as being very substantially original the only parts that make it lose some points with catchiness is the fact that the kick-ass drumline does take away from the rest of the song what I mean is, it's so good that it makes the rest of the song drop down. You have these fast-ass drum lines, but very slow and haunting singers. Some of it, it, it pairs together very well, especially Elena's death metal, and occasionally even Maluka's melodies. But it's just, at points, it may feel like that they complement each other very well. But for certain points in the song, it's just, I don't know, something about it doesn't sit well. A breakdown here or there I feel could have done the song some good, but again, this is just from an amateur, and I'm probably just talking out of my ass. There's probably a great reason for why the song is the way it is, and if it changed at all, I'm sure I might have given it a lower score. But with that said, if I had to listen to this or Not Ready to Die, I'd listen to Not Ready to Die. 
and for that reason, it's going to the very top of A tier. But not quite S tier. Samantha's Lullaby, the original. Catchiness, 5 out of 20. Sittingness, 4 out of 6. Lower significance, 2 out of 4. Bonus points, 3. Overall, 14 out of 30. E tier. Now, don't, don't raise your pitchforks. Put them down. Yeah, 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 I get it. It's Samantha's Lullaby. It's this great nostalgic song. Yada, yada, yada. I'll start with the good, okay? Before I defend myself. Samantha's Lullaby is a great fit for the maps that it's on. And if you don't know, the this song is an Easter egg song specifically on two maps that I know of. It's for Mob of the Dead and Nuketown Zombies. I'm going to mostly ignore Nuketown Zombies because Nuketown is just a hodgepodge thrown together, but I'll, I'll briefly touch on it. But anyways... A lot of the fittingness is going to be revolving around Mob of the Dead because there's a lot of songs and little things thrown into Nuketown just for the sake of it being Nuketown. But anyways, the song itself does revolve around the concept of death. So including the song about eternal sleep into Mob of the Dead, great choice. Great, great choice. And why fittingness gets a 4 out of 6 on this song. It fits the concept of not just zombies, but Mob of the Dead as a whole really well. However, Samantha's Lullaby, as many of you probably already know, is on every almost every single map in some sort of way. So although it's very fitting to Mob of the Dead, it's not very original, or, or it's not even really made for the map. And to further emphasize this point, like I said, it was also the Easter egg song in Nuketown Zombies. Though the activation was much less unique than Mob, but I'll get into Mob's activation. But because of that reason, it loses fitting this score for me. And lore-wise, it gets two. I'd give it a one or even a zero, but I mean, the name itself gives strong lore implications due to its use in almost every single map. The song has become very recognizable, and now, whenever you hear it, you know that something lore-significant or lore-heavy is happening. I mean, it's basically a call sign for something's going down. But also hearing it, you do get chills in lots of nostalgia with just hearing that familiar song even if it is very simple but funnily enough due to the many times that this song is used i it did lose a point in fittingness but gained a point in lore significance so yeah good for you samantha lullaby you're at a net zero <laughs> but that said the song itself on its own it's not catchy i have to say it okay i find it more annoying than anything i get it it's a lullaby and honestly, it's not supposed to be extremely catchy. It's supposed to be recognizable, short, and bittersweet, which I will say, it does accomplish. But honestly, I'd rather just not listen to it at all. I wouldn't say it's bad for what it is, but in comparison with all the other songs, which is what we're doing here, it's pretty bad. However, it does get three brownie points for having what I believe the most creative hidden song activation out of any other hidden song in the entire series. I might correct myself in the future, but as far as I'm aware right now, that's what I'm thinking. If you weren't aware though, how to activate it in Mob of the Dead is you stay in afterlife mode at the start of the game, do not revive yourself, and just let yourself die. You effectively give up and you get a game over. But instead of the normal game over song, the screen goes completely black and white and the song starts playing. Samantha's Lullaby starts playing. This has a huge lore implication is that I feel like no one talks about. Especially the fact that the, the entire universe that they're in goes black and white and dies like at the end of Blood of the Dead. Which I could get into for like 10-20 minutes. If anyone is interested, I would more than happy to make a video essay on that. But that's not what this video is about. However, it does make this song much cooler as a result, as I believe this alone 
makes it deserving of the most brownie points so far. However, it, you know, it doesn't save it too much as it really just saved it from being an F tier. So here it sits, E tier. Very unique activation, very nostalgic song, a lot of bonus points, still an E tier song. his way into heaven. <laughs> Reminds me of someone. Mad Hatter. Catchiness, 13 out of 20. Fittingness, 5 out of 6. Lower significance, 1 out of 4. Bonus point, 1. Overall, 20 out of 30. C tier. Personally, this song doesn't scream anything spectacular to me. It's catchy and a sort of I'll listen to it if it's on the radio kind of feeling. It does some good things with the audio that are really cool sounding and catchy, which gives it better than a straight average of 10 out of 20. But for a song called Mad Hatter, the song is quite slow and almost hypnotic. It, it kind of blends together to me. Uh, I still think it's a great song, especially with all the guitar riffs, but there could have been more done with it in my opinion. I've heard what Avenged Sevenfold can do, and this just isn't my favorite, only slightly above average. And to further that point, fittingness wise, the song is a fairly good fit, but I believe that it could fit possibly on another map. But all in all, it does fit the vibe of the map itself, and, and the message it sends matches that of the main antagonist and even a bit of Scar Scarlet's father. But Lore-wise, I mean, there's there's none to be found. You have to really go looking for it. The song itself exists on its own, and although it kind of fits the gladiator feel like I was saying, there's no real lore reason behind it. The closest con connection is the antagonist cult people are crazy, like the Mad Hatter, but, you know, that's really stretching. It's not nothing, so we'll get a zero, but it's only going to receive a one. However, I will say it does get a brownie point, because I think that the initiation process is fun. Shooting the four different colored coins is unique and fun to do the first couple of times, so I think it's deserving of a bonus point. Now, I know what you're saying, uh, yeah, all four of the coins is basically how you activate it on every single Chaos map, but it was the first map that I did it on, and I'm biased, I'm the one making the list, so sue me. It gets a bonus point. So, it's solidly in C tier. The bonus point doesn't really help, so if you don't like it, take it away. It doesn't really change its placing much. It's the thought that counts. Swords are my thing, but I'll give this baby a few slices. Classified's intro song, or classified swing, or this jazz is classified, whatever they want to call it. <laughs> Catchiness, 17 out of 20. Fittingness, 6 out of 6. Lore significance, 1 out of 4. Bonus point, 1. Overall, 25 out of 30. B tier. Classified intro, in my opinion, is a certified banger. Now, now hold on. Let's back up a little bit. This is about Easter egg songs, not intro songs. So why is this on this list? Well, not a lot of people know this. This is an Easter egg song on Classified. I believe Shockwave is the main Easter egg song for Classified, but this is a second Easter egg song. You can actually activate it. There are five terminals in the, uh, the war room that you can activate, and it'll activate the song. I would give it bonus point because of its activation, but that's not the reason for the bonus point. I think the activation is kind of annoying because you have to activate five different monitors in a completely arbitrary chosen order. It's I don't think it's that unique. I don't think it's that crazy. So that's not the bonus point if you're thinking that. Anyways, I am a huge sucker for jazz. So I think that I am horribly biased when it comes to this song. And if it were completely subjective, Subjective, I give this song a 20 out of 20. I have this song in my playlist. I love this song. But I'm aware of its flaws, and I'm also aware that jazz isn't for everyone. It isn't a perfect song by any means, I know, and nor is it that particularly long, but I still think that it's one of the best hidden songs in Black Ops 4. 
And that's not really saying much because it's Black Ops 4, but we'll get into that later. Uh, beyond the catchiness of the song, I think that the song itself fits the aesthetic of the map so incredibly perfect. The jazz fits the time period of the map greatly. It has an incredibly wacky, almost cartoonish vibe to it, which perfectly matches our crew. It, this map is the reintroduction of our cartoonish Ultimus character cast, so having this cartoonish intro song, perfect. Speaking of our crew, Ultimus is back, hey, let's go. Uh, and this song fits them perfectly as an opening theme, like I said. It shows them back into the spotlight. However, this is where the compliments end. Because as far as I can tell, there is little to no signif lore significance. The song was made for the intro, that's all, really. And while this trailer is lore heavy, the song it isn't the trailer. And we aren't ranking the trailers and intros here. Maybe I'll do that later, but that's not what we're doing. So I can't give it a higher score. There are also no familiar motifs or rhythms in the song to my knowledge, and is nothing more, story-wise, than a very catchy jazz anthem. However, in case I missed something, I give it a single point, because the cutscene is paralleled with was very significant. It shows us how our characters got here, what happened after Moon, what Samantha is doing, what happened to the Pentagon tape. All of these things are shown in the intro, and maybe parts of the song, the intro song do hint at this, or even hint back to 5. I just couldn't pick out any, but I wouldn't be surprised if there is, hence why I gave it a bonus point. But again, we're rating the music, not the videos it's paired with, so take the bonus point with a grain of salt. Regardless, I still think it deserves mentioning, and overall, I think it deserves a very solid spot at the bottom of A tier. Sorrows. Sounds about right. My adversary. Stormbound from Ancient Evil. Catchiness, 8 out of 20. Fittingness, 2 out of 6. Lore significance, 0 out of 4. Overall, 10 out of 30. F tier. Our first F tier. I'll be honest. I haven't listened to Stormbound before this, because I didn't play a lot of Black Ops 4 near the end of its cycle, and I especially didn't really care about its easter egg songs. And to be completely honest with you, I think a lot of it is a shit game. I'm gonna be real. A lot of people say that it's a hidden gem, and while I will say I do enjoy Black Ops 4 when I want a good easter egg, I don't think Black Ops 4 is really as good as many people have created for. That's it. Ancient Evil is a great map. I'm talking about Black Ops 4 as a whole. Ancient Evil great map. That's the map that the song is on. It's just a shame that this song is ass. But I gave my first listen to this song for this list with great expectations. It's a new Easter egg song. I love Easter egg songs. I didn't actually know about this song until making this tier list and oh, I thought I was super excited. And it's m mediocre at best. It's it's not great. I, I think that the map itself, like I said, is much better than the song, and personally, I just don't like it. I think this is the first song on the list that I can firmly say is just not good, at least in my opinion. Again, I really like it, that, that's fine. I just really don't. It's very repetitive, it blends together like no other song, as a long ass intro, and there doesn't seem to be anything very special about the song. The, the most hype part about the song is at the very end. Was this very final first, which had a small breakdown. But that was the only real noteworthy moment. I don't really think this is Kevin and Nova's best work, and honestly, halfway through the song, I was just waiting for it to end. It kind of just lost my attention. I kind of spaced out while listening to it, which hasn't really happened with any of the other songs. Minus, I think, one. Uh, compared to the other songs Clark has made for zombies, including Carry On and We All Fall Down, the song just doesn't hold up. Furthermore, into the other scores, the, there is no lore significance that I can find in this song. What does the storm have to do with ancient evil? What, what is storm bad? I, I might just not know much about chaos's lore, and I might amend this position in its list if I, I find out more or if anyone in the comments can find anything, but I, I can't really think of anything that fits the map. It, it, I mean, that fits the lore of the map. I can't, like, there's nothing. And, and finally, does it? fit the map? Not 
not really. I mean, there doesn't really seem to be any part of it that screamed ancient evil for me. Honestly, if I just heard the song, which, you know, when I initially gave it a listen, I didn't know what map it was on. I just had a playlist of all the Easter egg songs. I thought this was the Easter egg song for Voyage of Despair. Like, that's how bad it is. For some reason, I thought it was for Voyage or even a different map, but not for Ancient Evil. But, you know, then I listened to Drowning, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's Voyage of Despair. But anyways, the only thing that really saves it for the fittingest score is the chorus, as it rises up the depressive feeling and apprehension with v feelings of triumph when it comes to the Stormbound part, which does really show the, the feeling of this abandoned Greek ancient city. Yeah, that that triumph feeling, I wish they really leaned into it, this song, but they just didn't. And with that, we have our first F-tier song. Nothing against Kevin Sherwood. Like I said, I love his works, but uh, the song just wasn't for me, man. Uh, thanks for watching the shit show. Subscribe. Bye.